All right, guys, today we're going to talk about sun angles. Sun angles are really important. They're critical to our design. Since permaculture is a design science, we want to know where we're going to put things. Where are we going to locate our trees and swale systems? Where are we going to put our houses and other structures? How about our pasture lands? And then when we have our structures, what's the angle we're going to use to put our solar panels and solar heaters up? And we all know that Earth spins on an axis of approximately 23.5 degrees. Now when you look at this illustration, you see an Earthship style home. It's an Earth berm. They bury it into the wall. What you have is you have a winter solstice. And when you're dealing with a structure like this, you want to see the winter sun into your structure. You want the sun heating that up to keep you as warm as you can. In the summertime, you don't want the heat, heat, the sun heating you up. It's hot enough. So you want shade inside your building. And this is why these angles are very important. These will tell you how to put your overhangs and everything like that. Now this shows an equinox noon. Now, the Earth, uh, this says uh, Earth is 23, point, 23 degrees 28 minutes, which is about 23 and a half degrees. Uh, the latitude of this place is 42 and a half, 42 degrees 48 minutes. So, this is how we calculate this out. The equinox noon is the angle of the sun minus 42 degrees 48 minutes, which is 47 degrees 12 minutes. That is this angle right here. Now for the summer solstice we've got 42 point 42 degrees 12 minutes plus 23 degrees 28 minutes which is 70 degrees 48 minutes. That is this angle here. For the winter solstice this is where the sun is down you've got this angle which is the 42 degrees 12 minutes now you subtract 28 degree, 23 degrees 28 minutes and you get 23 degrees 44 minutes. That is this angle here. Now for our purposes we're not going to do it quite as detailed. Alright, for your property in the northern hemisphere. Now in the southern hemisphere you reverse these, but northern hemisphere. You take the latitude Add 23.5 degrees, that gives you the sun angle from zenith. Now for the summer solstice, you take the latitude, you subtract 23.5 degrees, and this gives you the noon sun angle from zenith. Here's an example of what we're talking about. Here in Jamaica, this is what we look like. Our sun angle is actually... We're... Here's the zenith line. Our summer sun is actually on the northern side of our property. Now, if we were in my property up in New York or farther north, it wouldn't have to be all the way to New York, obviously. But these are the sun angles you would be looking at. Now, let's take a look at how this actually applies in our personal design on SketchUp. This is the zone plan I have for the property that we have here in Jamaica. We are at approximately 18 degrees north, give or take, close enough for what we're doing. Now, when you use SketchUp, this gives you some really interesting advantages. Okay, here's a food forest. We've talked about this several times. And what we're going to do is, we have put this line here for a reason. This line is the point at which I need sun to hit all the time. These trees, these are actually shrubs. These are mostly going to be figs and guavas and pomegranates. But they all need full sun. They need a lot of sun. So because of that, they need sun all year round. Now we're going to put a simple line in from here. We're going to go up on the blue axis, which is the, 
this will be our zenith line, the blue axis. Now that we've done that, we're going to come over here and we're going to get our protractor out. Now we need, no, there we go, we need this one. We need it on the red axis, which is, now we're going to come up here. This gives us our line. Now we have 23 and a half plus 18. All right, this is going to be 6.5 degrees on the south end of this. Then we're going to do the exact same thing all over again here. Come up. 18 minus er. 18 plus 23 and a half degrees is going to be what? 41.5 degrees. So we go 41.5 here. And there's our two angles. What this gives us is, this is the angle of the winter sun at noon, and this is the angle of the summer sun at noon. Now, I have already drawn in some planes, so we're going to delete those guides, and we're going to put in winter sun. Here's our winter sun. I created a plane to show where the winter sun is. And this is the summer sun. So when you look at this from up top, this area will always get sun. But we know, here's the thing that's most important. When we put a tree on the next swell, we cannot have that tree shade out these. This area is this area needs to be getting sun, but the area between this food forest and the next swale is going to be pasture land. This is where we're going to graze sheep and goats and probably chickens and ducks. We're going to run them all through on a rotating pasture system. But they need the, that area can handle a little shade. These trees cannot. So in order for us to calculate where the next swale is going to be, we need to know what the winter sun is. So this tree will never shade out. And what I have done is I've showed where I put this tree. This will allow these trees to get very large. All right, let's show how tall this tree can get without hitting our plane. That's 85 feet. That's a big tree at 85 feet. So, as long as our trees don't reach over 85, uh, 90 feet, as long as our trees don't get over 85 to 90 feet, we're not going to be shading out those figs. And that's what we need to do. That is our design for this system. Now, we're going to get into more detail with the rest of this soon. But for right now, that is our sun angle calculator and why we use the sun angle, how we use the sun angle, why it's important to know what your sun angles are. Now, I hope this helps, guys. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. If uh, you have any questions, feel free to ask. If I didn't get it, if this wasn't clear enough for you, please tell me. I will then try and do this. In, uh, I'll answer any questions you have and try and make this more uh, understandable. Uh, thanks, everybody.